Hi, my name is Jay Ilza. I am the uh, host of uh, Speech Talk Live, and this marks episode number nine. Uh, I am based out of uh, Hazlitt, uh, New Jersey. It's about 50 miles from uh, New York City, and I'm kind of doing three things right now. One is I have a consulting business that I, it's called Vital Group, and I help uh, small companies uh, generate sales. Uh, the second thing I'm currently working on is uh, something that's kind of taking longer, as I'm currently writing two books, but I've decided to just focus on one, which is kind of complements this course, uh, public speaking. So that's tying up a lot of my time. And then the third thing, obviously, is this uh, program that we do uh, every Friday, which also requires quite a bit of time, Speech Talk Live. And I also mentor uh, the Coursera's uh, on-demand platform course called Introduction to Public Speaking. So this whole kind of started out with a cohort program that we did in conjunction with Coursera. And then after that 10-week uh, uh, course ended, we just basically decided to turn this into a program to kind of help that community on this uh, Google Plus Hangout as a way of uh, uh, helping them. So, so let me just give you the purpose uh, why we do this. So we, as I always say, that the public speaking is like an ongoing thing. You know, you're always working to improve. And the, the purpose of this uh, Speech Talk Live are, there are four reasons. One is that we all want to improve, so we want to learn. Uh, second is that uh, some of us have been doing this now for quite some time, and we feel that we can help others. So part of our goal also is to teach others so that they can get up to speed uh, quickly. Uh, the third thing is that once you record a speech, you also want to get feedback from others. So that also becomes a very important part of this, is to share the speeches. And today we have Latesh who has... Uh, uh, generously uh, uh, shared one of his speech that he worked on and next week I'm pretty sure we'll get uh, Julie's speech that she's been working on for quite some time and the purpose of sharing is that once you have done your own self-evaluation and you feel like at this point you have taken it as far as you can that's when you want to bring it here and that's when we can give you some real so that way you can drive the process and the, the, the fourth uh, thing is uh, just uh, support uh, public speaking is fearful. I mean, let's face it, people have tremendous fear. Everybody you talk to, you'll find out that they're afraid to speak. They all want to do it, but they're all afraid. And this is the place where you can get your fear out. Because I have this saying that there is no such thing as public speaking. It's only speaking. There's good speaking, bad speaking, or no speaking. Okay? So at this point, uh, I will uh, have the other participants who are on to introduce themselves, and then we will uh, start. Uh, oh, so before we get started, so we have three segments today. The first segment is going to be facilitated by Somyan Tirumurthy, and he's, he's picked an interesting topic here because it's not necessarily about public speaking, but again, like I said, there is only speaking, right, whether it's good speaking, bad speaking, and no speaking. And what do you do after you say hi to somebody? So this is more like a conversational thing. But I think it's very important because introduction is very key. If you don't introduce, that is the most important speech. And I think he, I'd like to hear what he has to say about that and then have a discussion around that. The second segment is going to be reviewing Latesh's speech that he has sent us. So we're going to give him a feedback and at the same time use his speech to teach others and also learn from it. And lastly, the third segment is that I picked the speech. This one is a little different kind of speech that I picked. Up to this point, we have gone with real high-powered speaker. This person is may not be well known, but she is known. I do know her because I do see her on TV quite a bit. And I found one of her speech that I think my father pointed out. And I decided to use this speech as a way to find out, you know, look at what she does well and what could be done better. So that's the purpose of uh, using her speech as a way to learn and also to see what we can learn from what she has done and how we can make it better, okay? So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Julie to introduce herself, and then we'll go around, and then we'll uh, kick off the first segment. Julie, take over. Hi, good morning, everybody. Hey, Jay, Latish, and uh, Somi, and thank you again for being here, and thank you, Jay, for uh, leading this. Um, I am interested today in um, 
Well, I am also a fellow student and a mentor. I actually have been in this class since uh, last October, and I thought I would just pop in and pop out in three months, and I discovered that uh, public speaking is really um, a wonderful forum to really uh, help me to connect with myself, first of all, because it helps me to organize ideas. And the second thing that it really helps me to do is to uh, reach out. Um, I have been doing this informative speech, as uh, Jay says, for a long time. And I'm going to deliver it um, next week. And one of the things I was told is that my energy is naturally calm and serene. And to me, that meant I could put you to sleep. And so um, I started doing some really like, um, there's a rinse eyes technique, which is also a yogic technique, is you just go, ah, ah, and then put the energy down the bottom. So I've been doing that. And so hopefully my energy is picked up and you feel um, more alive. And with this, I turn back over to Jay. Thank you. All right, I like this new Julie. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that should be exciting. I can't wait to to, to see that progress there. Uh, uh, Latesh, you want to go next? Yeah, thank you, Jay. Uh, thank you, Julie, and uh, uh, hi, So uh, it's a great day for me, you know, to end my Friday with this connect uh, with you all. Uh, so uh, my name is Latesh uh, Malakrishnan, and I'm based from uh, India. That's uh, the south part of uh, India, Kochi. Uh, and I work in the software industry as a project manager. So I uh, use this platform to improve my speaking skills. And um, I get uh, plenty of opportunities to keep improvising myself and to be comfortable with uh, public speaking. The team here is um, very helpful with uh, constructive feedback and uh, various areas wherein I can find improvements. There. So it has been very helpful both in my personal and professional life to be part of this particular platform. So thank you, thank you, Jay. Over to you again. Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks, Latesh. And I will at this point uh, let Somian introduce himself, and then we'll get started with segment one. <coughs> thank you, Jay. Uh, you, you see, today I was in fact uh, going to talk about uh, self-introduction as a topic, and maybe uh, this uh, self-introduction that I'm making uh, would be a small sample of. Uh, what I expect a typical self-introduction is going to be like. Uh, my name is uh, Soumyan. I'm from uh, Bangalore. Bangalore is called uh, Silicon Valley of India. So when you say Silicon Valley, immediately you uh, associate it with uh, the computer industry, uh, the software industry. Yes, Bangalore is famous for these, but uh, I came from the computer peripheral industry. Of course, uh, I'm 67 years old and I retired about uh, seven years back. And ever since I've been mixing some amount of uh, uh, voluntary work along with some consultancy practice, my primary uh, preoccupation in uh, voluntary work is uh, uh, as a Wikimedia volunteer, our evangelist. It's in this connection that I got interested in uh, public speaking because in order to you know talk about uh, Wikimedia uh, and you know uh, create awareness to people as well as to bring in more authors who will contribute, I need to use uh, informative speech as well as uh, uh, you know, persuasive speech, and so uh, in that context, you know, the this course has uh, certainly helped me to bridge a gap which I felt was uh, existing in my personality. Okay, so uh, uh, it, the the public speaking course is not the only one I have uh, done in the Coursera. I also have uh, done some more courses which perhaps reveal uh, my interest. Uh, I have done courses uh, essentially on thinking processes. For example, there is a course called Model Thinking, there is another called Mathematical Thinking, and a third one called Critical Thinking. So a whole series of uh, these kind of uh, uh, subjects is something I took up. Then I also took up things on uh, communication. One was on uh, English composition, and this one is on uh, uh, you know public speaking, these kind of things. I also did courses on uh, data processing and uh, you know uh, psychology and music and so on. Those are all uh, different uh, uh, dimensions. But I thought uh, the audience for this uh, particular speech will perhaps uh, appreciate uh, the things related to the thinking process and the communication process. So that's what I wanted to uh, be known by. Uh, so th that brings me to the end of uh, my, uh, you know, self-introduction, and uh, I hope to uh, share some more ideas 
uh, when I talk about uh, what, what do you uh, say after you say hi. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> right uh, Samian, thanks a lot. And uh, I'm going to take a brief pause and then introduce the next segment so that way I can then cut it over easily when I edit this. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick pause and then I'll come back. Okay, well, welcome back. Uh, this is Jay Oza, and uh, you're watching uh, Speech Talk Live, episode number nine, and uh, we're moving to segment number one. And in this segment is going. This segment is going to be facilitated by Somyan Thirumurthy, and this one is about what do you say after you say hi to somebody. So I'll let Somyan uh, introduce it and then uh, give a little talk and then facilitate the discussion on this. Somyan, take it over. Thank you, Jay. Uh, my interest in this uh, topic uh, uh, was, you uh, know, triggered by uh, my watching a large number of introductory videos on uh, the first assignment of the uh, public speaking course. Uh, we were given something like uh, four minutes to talk about uh, ourselves, at today's ourselves, but I found that most people just spent about 30 seconds. Uh, you know, they perhaps simply said, uh, I am so and so, I came from such a place, I am uh, interested in becoming a great public speaker and I like uh, XYZ as a public speaker. So that's all. That took less than 10 seconds. Most people just seem to say only that much. Then it got me uh, thinking about what is it that people find difficult in public, I mean, in uh, introducing themselves, or what they should say and how they should say that. So this is a uh, yeah, area where I started uh, thinking uh, deeper. Uh, one thing I found was maybe people uh, in that kind of context, maybe people restricted it to just four sentences because you know they wanted to get rid of uh, uh, this. Perhaps was their first speech, and they wanted to get rid of it as soon as possible, and they don't, uh, they didn't want to linger on the video for longer than 30 seconds. Okay, so apparently it could have been one reason. Second could be that you know they really didn't uh, quite understand what is the importance of uh, introduction. Okay, and a third one is uh, uh, maybe they had a five-page CV and uh, they felt that the two minutes that was available to them was uh, you know too little to really cover that and just uh, decided to let it go. Okay, so this could be one of the things. Anyway, I just thought I will address this and also cover certain other uh, general conversational uh, situations. Uh, if you really look at uh, apprehension, you don't have to have apprehension to talk about yourself. Okay, so you are the best, uh, uh, you know, author for uh, of an article about yourself, and nobody else knows more than you. And so you can, uh, you know, the content at least is something on which you can be very confident, and there is no need to feel apprehensive about it. Second is, you know, what's the importance of uh, talking about yourself? You know, uh, at least in the context of this uh, speech uh, uh, course. I would like to say something before I move to another topic. In this course, people are going to need a study buddy. The self-introduction is perhaps going to be a great opportunity for people to advertise about themselves and uh, make their, you know, their interests, etc., known so they can choose the appropriate study buddy. Okay. So if people think that you know they are going to bank on their friends and relatives and all for uh, you know uh, their practice uh, speeches. Uh, they are uh, mistaken. You know, it's uh, perhaps okay to use the ladies and friends for overcoming apprehension and to, you know, for the initial phase. But after that, you know, they will uh, perhaps not be in a position to help you much. You know what happens to insurance agents when, uh, you know, they start, uh, uh, you know, soliciting business, all their friends slowly vanish. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very soon they are left with no friends. So if you try to go and say, hey, here is a speech, I want to talk about this topic and can you give me a feedback, very soon you will lose all your friends. So please don't try to do that. So uh, who is the best person you can pick for you know, this kind of conversation uh, uh, related to uh, you know, uh, working together? Uh, yet another student in Coursera who is also undergoing the same course, who knows the same terminology, who can perhaps give uh, feedback under the same structure, etc. He is the best a suited person. That's one. One is he can give you feedback in the same structure, etc., which you can effectively use. Second is that guy needs you as much as you need him. Okay. So the the situation is uh, uh, well, uh, you need a guinea pig and he needs a guinea pig. Let's say. So you can both use each other as a guinea pig and uh, you know tolerate them or enjoy them as the case may be. Okay. The third aspect is 
uh, okay, fine. Uh, one can say, look, if I, all that I need is a study buddy, the perhaps the program gives me a random choice of study buddies so to review, and what's the big deal? This is where I bring in the aspect of introduction. You know, in an introduction, you need to reveal sufficient information about you so that the other person can understand and relate to your interests and react to that. See, you are going to be perhaps talking about, uh, you know, uh, you are going to be making informative speeches, you are perhaps going to be making uh, uh, persuasive speeches. In the informative speech, what will you do? You will talk about an area of your expertise. In a persuasive speech, what will you do? You will talk about uh, uh, your cause for which you know you have a, a, a lot of passionate, uh, you know, uh, passion. So you want to support the cause. So the person who is going to review tens of videos of yours should be able to appreciate these aspects. You should share your passion. You should be able. To, you should be curious about the informative speeches that you are going to make. If their tastes are going to be very different, it's going to be one major problem. You are not going to be able to work out a long-term relationship at all. So this is the reason why I say you must reveal sufficient information about you. Recently, I was talking to my brother-in-law, who was. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, president in uh, Rotary Club uh, in another city, Chennai. I asked him, what, what do they do? What, what, how do they uh, uh, introduce themselves when they go and meet new people? Apparently, there is some kind of protocol there wherein they have to say, what do they do as part of their introduction? There is some kind of a small structure that is there, apparently. So you say, this is my name and I do such a thing and you introduce yourself about your professional uh, you know, uh, area. You say, about, talk about your expertise or uh, 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 your profession and uh, your interests, your uh, passions. What are the kind of voluntary activities for which you know you have been uh, espousing and things like that. So that seems to be very close to what I was uh, observing here. I was observing here, you need to talk about your expertise, you need to talk about your passions. And it so happens that in Rotary Club also apparently they were saying the same thing in a personal context where you meet uh, individually, uh, you talk about the same thing. The only difference is in a speech context, there is no conversation really. We are asked to, uh, you know, use a conversational mode of communicating, but then we really don't have a dialogue happening. Whereas in a face-to-face -face discussion, we have the opportunity for a dialogue. In opportunity for a dialogue, the, the other party also has got equal amount of, uh, you know, uh, capacity to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, pull the introduction in directions in which they are interested in, they, because they are going to put some questions. Whereas in a uh, public speaking kind of situation, you are going to have a monologue. You are going to say uh, how you want the other person to perceive you. So here it gives you a kind of opportunity, like in marketing, we say positioning. You position yourself, saying that look, this is the way I want my audience to be uh, viewing me. So you have the ability to position yourself and introduce yourself in a, some some particular way. So that's one difference. In uh, the face-to-face -face situation, the other person also can pull and you know uh, shift that drift the organization. I mean. Uh, conversation in that direction, you know, uh, get some more information. So that's a possibility. The other aspect I was talking about earlier is maybe some people are overrun and they have a five-page CV and how do, how do they fit it into you know uh, two pages? Look, I mean, as I was aging, I was becoming a little you know uh, fuller, and my pants were no longer fitting. Okay, so similarly, my uh, CVs also kept on bloating. You know, they became from two pages, they slowly became five pages. So it was very difficult for me, you know, to trim that back to two-page CV. So ultimately, nobody is interested in a five-page CV. They don't have the patience. They don't have the time. So as a consultant, when I started my practice, you know, I had to uh, send one uh, self-introduction of mine to my clients, and that I had to focus in such a way that I don't bring all my 45 years of experience. I only talk about the two or three aspects which are relevant to that client and highlight that and make it interesting. So that is what the new dimension uh, turned out to be. So this way, we need to know two factors. We need to only talk about two factors. And those two must be the ones which help us to position ourselves appropriately. And we must make it more interesting. When we say that, we must make it interesting. So that is what is important. We don't have to cram in two pages of uh, you know PDF document into you know two minutes. But we should be able to say two factors, two aspects of our personality, two facets of our personality. So coupled with the previous thing, the previous uh, uh, um, example I gave, the two factors that we can talk about are our area of expertise and our passion. In which area 
does our passion like so this is applicable both for a yeah, public speaking situation as well as yeah introductory a, a situation where we introduce ourselves to other people this is what i have to say thank you oh that was excellent uh, yeah so let me comment on that uh, <clears throat> if what uh, somin just said is kind of what my book is about actually and one of the things uh, that I found is that that the reason why people struggle at public speaking is that w when they're giving a public speaking they don't really sound like the way they sh they sound when they are talking to their friends so in a way you're kinda out of your natural way of speaking and then they struggle freeze up and then they get nervous and w w one of the things that uh, that what, what Somian said was uh, like how do you start a conversation and I've been giving a lot of thought to this and uh, in, in my book what I say is that you all heard of small talk right like uh, so I'm gonna like hey Julie you, you wanna ro role play this so so let's say I, uh, uh, so Julie okay so let's say Julie and I are meeting okay Julie you don't know me okay but somehow we happen to be on this uh, hangout okay so I'll say uh, hi Julie Hi Jay, how are you? Who are yeah, so, uh, is this your first time uh, using this uh, format, and, and what, what, do you, what do you think of it? Oh yes, um, it's my first time on the Hangout, and uh, it's 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 both intimidating and cool. It's intimidating because I never know who I'm really talking to, you know, and before coming on literally the whole world can come on and so that always is a little bit of uh, scary for me uh, but it's also cool because I love to reach out and touch the world and interact with people so what do you think? Well I'm not gonna scare you well I, I you know it's interesting <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned that that's how I felt when I first started but then little by little as I started uh, uh, doing this show called Speech Talk Live, I'm gaining more confidence. So you know, at this point, I don't know. If, I don't want to say I'm a pro at it, but at least I'm I'm feeling comfortable with this format. And in the beginning, I was kind of frightened. Uh, okay, I'll stop it right here. Okay, so here's here's let me tell you what I just did here, which is uh, something. So I said hi to Julie, and Julie said hi. Okay. Now, typically in an introduction, what typically happens is that you gotta up the ante. You gotta up the ante. If I say hi to Julie and Julie just says hi, the conversation at that point gets very awkward because she just essentially uh, ended it, right? But in my case, what I did was I just didn't say, because I'm initiating the conversation, so I said hi, but then I suddenly just asked her a question because it was already assumed, and I said, wait, what do you think of this format? Because she's already there, right? So I already took it to the next level. And the, and, and the other thing that I did here, there's something that a lot of people don't get is that once you meet somebody new, you don't keep peppering them with questions. It's very uncomfortable. You ask one question, so I did. I said, so what do you think of this uh, Hangout format? Because that's, very, that's a small talk. It's contextual, right? She's on a Hangout. I'm on a Hangout. I'm not bringing up something about like, hey, uh, Julie, what do you think of Donald Trump? That would be very jumping to the next level. And that she'll be like, who's this weirdo? Why is he asking me about Donald Trump? I don't even like, do I know him? So you got to be careful. First, you got to start with a small talk to get that comfort level to, because that's contextual. Then you have to share something. Okay, so immediately after she told me about her experience, I did not ask her another question. I immediately shared my experience with it. Now, what that does is suddenly Julie's now saying, oh, wow, suddenly he's giving me some more information about him that I didn't know about. And then that conversation then progresses, you see? So we started from high, and immediately we're both getting comfortable with each other and perhaps can move from small talk to, as I call it, mid talk, and perhaps even big talk, right? And anyway, that that's one of the things that people do need to practice. A lot of conversations essentially go nowhere because people are just not good at having conversation. They don't know what to do after they say hi. So anyway, at this point, I'll let others uh, chime in on that. Uh, but 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 so I mean, that's uh, I've been giving a lot of thought to it, and thanks for bringing this topic up because. 
it is the most important uh, thing we do when we meet people, right? We always engage in small talk. The question is, how do you take go from a small talk to mid talk in a seamless manner so you're not suddenly intimidating the other person like my god this guy's coming on too strong and and one thing i will differ from what you just said you want to take out what you do because then what you'll do is you'll dominate the, like i'm dominating right now you'll dominate the conversation and not let other person speak so the main thing that you're good at like in your case you're like a wikipedia or whatever like you said you have a cv that's five pages long don't even bring that up just just completely suppress that then you can have a real good conversation say something that you're not that you don't want to talk about something that you know a lot about but take that out of the equation altogether uh, okay at this point I'll, 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 I'll shut up and let others talk yeah 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 uh, Jay I uh, appreciate that uh, what you have uh, brought up is a very interesting point in the sense every person in a conversation has to give some additional hook a new hook on which you know the uh, the conversation can be built okay so if you don't provide any hook at all and you just say well for, for example as you said so somebody says hi and another person also responds hi uh, uh, then you are uh, you are not building okay so the idea is each person should be able to make the conversation easy and uh, provide a additional hook if there is no hook also we can always create one suppose i say look i am soumyan i am from bangalore maybe uh, if I say I'm from Bangalore, that itself gives the other person maybe a hook. Oh, Bangalore, where is it located? Or uh, uh, how is it? Uh, how, how is Bangalore? I have never been to Bangalore. So many things can be said. So it's a, it's a art and to you know to, to catch on to every hook and be able to build upon. So, uh, uh, but uh, you know, in my uh, primary this one, uh, when I talked about uh, somebody talking about a few more things, I was only re referring to the uh, public speaking kind of situation where you really don't have a conversation going. In a face-to-face -face conversation, you have a dialogue that develops. Each one can say something. In in that situation, if I want to say some five or six factors, five or six sentences, it will be very awkward, very uh, meaningless. So there, I can go by sentence by sentence, and uh, I mean the other party also is able to, you know, by their counter question or their uh, uh, counter response, they are in a position to shift the I mean conversation in a certain direction. Whereas in a uh, uh, speech situation. That opportunity is not there, so that's the one in which you know you go ahead and position yourself because you have no uh, no uh, conversation going on. So you might as well use it to your advantage, saying that I position myself like this. So even in a personal thing, one can always uh, uh, you know uh, manipulate in such a way that you can uh, you know uh, position yourself. That's also possible. But then uh, in a uh, natural conversation situation, uh, the other party uh, also provides enough amount of uh, hooks to uh, you know to formulate the. Uh, overall structure of how the speech is going to take this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get uh, Julian yeah. Bethes to comment on this. Yeah. Go ahead, Julie. Okay. Thanks. So, um, just to recap, I I really appreciate some of the stuff you said, um, and that helps me. Um, what you so I'm going to say what I find useful, and that's how it helps me. So. Um, I think it's really nice to have um, Somia's suggestion to have some a couple factors. So, like work and passion, for instance, uh, and then also to have a hook. Um, I think those are really great. And then I really appreciate what Jay said, literally, uh, about the way to start is to asking a question within the context of uh, where the engagement is, because that. Um, that really makes both of us stay present and comfortable. And the other thing is um, revealing something about oneself. That really helpful. And then uh, the idea that somehow there's a seamless transition from small talk to mid talk. And I will appreciate what those terms mean. Um, maybe you can do a presentation on that. And then and I like uh, Somian's idea of doing a hook. Uh, my own personal experience is I'm very comfortable and therefore I feel I'm very good in a group setting where, um, where I'm either facilitating or being facilitated in the introductions. So someone will say, tell me about yourself. I find it's very challenging in, um, in a party situation or even in a networking environment. So I think these ideas are really helpful for me in um, 
in areas where I'm not comfortable. So I hope to take your ideas and put it into a little script. And maybe I'll practice that and demonstrate that. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, we, and, and yeah, and we can certainly use this as a way to, uh, like we just did a role play there. We could definitely do that at uh, time. All right, Latesh, go ahead. Latish, you have something to say? He might be having some technical difficulties. Yes, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I hope I'm audible. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, uh, sorry, I think I'm having some trouble. Yeah, you're. We're not able to hear you. All right, so we'll just uh, any any close. Okay, Somian, uh, we we we're, we're unable to hear Latesh, so I'll I'll turn it over back to Somian. Somian, any closing closing thoughts? Because I think yeah, we can I cover. Know, uh, we can uh, see, um, uh, when I was uh, uh, preparing for this initially, I was uh, looking more at the introductory speech as the trigger point from which you know my entire uh, thought process uh, emanated. Uh, Jay certainly brought in the other context of face-to-face, uh, uh, -face, personal introduction, and what do we say, etc. And uh, that's the context in which you know, I also explored a little. And then I found that uh, what the guy from uh, Rotary uh, Club had to say was uh, so remarkably uh, close to what I was otherwise going to say. In the sense, uh, we want to talk about our, I mean, our expertise, and we want to talk about our uh, passion. And in the Rotary Club also, apparently, those are the kind of topics on which you know the conversation uh, is initiated. One is uh, since they are, as a Rotary they are in, involved in a lot of uh, voluntary activities. They want to know about the passion, so that's uh, one important thing for them. And also, uh, you know, they want to uh, get into this about uh, their uh, professional work also. So the, those are the two dimensions which you know apparently they also start that conversation. So uh, that uh, kind of a thing was remarkably similar. That was something I was uh, uh, quite uh, appreciative of. Yeah, we got we got some. I mean, we got Latesh back. Latesh, uh, you have any comments on it before we close out this uh, first segment? Latesh, can you hear me? You have any comments on this? Otherwise, we're going to have to move to next segment. Looks like he's having some technical difficulties. All right. So at at this point, uh, yeah. Okay. At, at this point, I'm going to take a, a short pause, and then we'll move to segment two, which is reviewing Latesh's speech, uh, OK? OK, uh, welcome back uh, to Speech Talk Live. My name is Jay Oza, I'm the host, and we're at episode number nine. We're moving to segment number two, and in this segment, we use it to review a speech that somebody has kindly shared with us. And today, uh, we're going to review a speech that Latesh uh, Balakrishna has uh, shared, sent us uh, to provide him uh, feedback. And his topic is on uh, how online presence is shaping our identity. So we'll have him introduce the, the speech. And I'll, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it on to Julie, who will facilitate this session. So Julie, take over. Hi. Um, thank you, Jay and Latish and Somian. And uh, yes, uh, Latish has uh, bravely um, come to us to get some feedback on his speech, which is, uh, how is, uh, is internet affecting our identity? I'm going to see if uh, Latesh can um, share with us. If not, I will do it. Uh, what, he, what he wants from the speech and also uh, what his speech is about. Latesh, can you can you can you speak at all? Can you? I mean, is there any kind of uh, audio? If not, perhaps you can. I, yeah. Oh, great! Yes. Great. Please give us uh, like a few minutes, a quick discussion of what your speech is about and what kind of feedback you would like from us. Sure. Uh, so my speech is about the current trend that we are seeing because uh, 
Everybody uh, is uh, equipped with smartphones, tablets, iPads. So uh, when we are living in an era where there is a lot of uh, connectivity happening, and most of it is happening in the virtual environment. So the reason I, I, I took this particular uh, topic was to uh, provide an insight about uh, how our usage, uh, specifically when we are going to use, uh, we are going to browse through various websites, we are going to go through so many social forums, etc. Uh, all these activities are actually being recorded somewhere. You know, some organizations are using this to uh, probably sell our identities across. So I wanted to highlight this and um, it was more like whether we are living in an uh, environment or in a particular era um, where, um, you know, whether our uh, exclusivity or our identity, which is so personal to us, um, is, it, is it really a, a place wherein we should be careful, whether uh, we need to, uh, you know, go around browsing the sites, etc., with also in mind that somebody is watching us all the time. So that, that's the purpose of this particular talk. And um, it, was, um, it was more of an argumentative and uh, uh, informative mix of both. So I tried to do some kind of a uh, role play also, uh, just to bring in some kind of, uh, you know, um, a glamour factor. Yeah, th 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 thanks, uh, Julia. Back to you. OK, thank you. Um, great. Well, one of you. Uh, Thank you, Latesh. I, I got that you like. Uh, what kind of feedback would you like? Just uh, like start anything. Um, yeah, I think um, yeah, the whether from the topic perspective, whether I was uh, uh, forceful enough, and uh, from my uh, personal uh, communication skills aspects, uh, uh, from the from the verbal aspects as well as from the non-verbal side. And anything that I probably need to focus on to improve in in any area. Great, thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, Somia. Would you like to go next? Yeah, I watched uh, I watched uh, Latesh's uh, 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 video. Uh, one of the things I liked about it was uh, a kind of a very very uh, easy. As if, you know, I'm sitting in front of him in another chair and he is there on having a chat, you know. So that's the kind of uh, <laughs> video capture, etc. was in such a board that, uh, you know, we, we, I felt that way. He was perhaps holding up a cell phone in his hand and uh, then he went out to talk about it and uh, towards the end of it, well, he was getting many calls <laughs> and then he, he, he switched over to another topic. Fine. It, it was all very nicely, uh, you know, um, uh, arranged. I think uh, that was a very interesting way of, uh, 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 you know, recording an event. I like that uh, style very much. Thank you. Thank you, Somian. Thank you, Somian. Yeah. Jay, would you oh, like to? Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks, Thanks, Julie. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that I, I, I like, uh, Latesh, Latesh, your, your, your style is really good. I like the way you have that conversational style of, uh, of speaking to, to people. Uh, the only thing I'll comment on that is that this was a speech. You, you really needed to be doing it standing up because we can't see your body language, and body language is very important in a, in a speech. Uh, and, and I think because you were doing it sitting down, I think... This is a, what I know. In, in one sense, there were like a lot of positives there because you came across very uh, somebody that uh, we know, very friendly, conversational, like almost like you're, you you can connect with people. Uh, but what that also did was this. I think kind of also kind of hurt the speech a little bit is that the speech kind of lacked the focus here. And let me just point this out uh, because when you first started the speech and said that the speeches on how it's going to shape your identity, right? I think it was very important to define those two things. Like, you do talk about the online presence, but, but there was no real explanation as far as, well, you know, before I go into how it's shaping your identity, let me first explain to you the online presence that you're all familiar with, such as using the smartphones. You, you kind of showed that as far as like getting the you're getting on a WhatsApp. But remember, your audiences may not be familiar with that. So you have to basically assume that your audience 
is not in on what you're doing. Okay, so you have the burden is on you to explain that, and I think you made a lot of assumptions here, which I think uh, that perhaps you shouldn't have. And one is to clearly define, even though it sounds like, wow, people know it, but it doesn't hurt to, to say, well, here's what I mean by online presence. But the one definition you really needed to focus on was identity, because people have different understanding of what is an online versus offline identity. That's a broad topic, actually. That's a really a complex topic. So right off the bat, when, when I first heard that, that this is about shaping your identity. I was expecting this talk to first set the level set it and then go into it and explain to what are the different identities you're really talking about. And one thing I noticed in your speech is that after you use that, you use that word identity, you didn't come in back and mention the word identity till like almost like nine minutes into your talk. And that is just too long when you're talking about identity. You can't, you can't wait till nine minutes to talk about it. And that's when you were talking about uh, Sherry Turkle's book, Alone Together. And when I look at this speech, there are a lot of different speeches in this one speech, actually. The identity part really is a very small portion of this speech. Actually, it's only about two minutes when you're talking about Sherry Turkle. And that's the part where I said, wow, now he's getting to the point, but it's too late at this point. And then at the end, you ended with the organization. That's a totally different topic altogether. That's about how companies are capturing your information and can, create, can understand your identity. So a lot of this stuff did not come across very clearly to me as, a, as somebody who's like, what, what, like, my job is to become smarter from listening to your speech. And I didn't come across really understanding more about identity. I got a lot of the things that you're doing as far as using uh, Facebook and using Google and all that. That's all fine, but that had nothing to do as far as from I can tell about identity. It wasn't explained in a way what does that mean as far as shaping online identity is concerned. So I, maybe I'm being too critical here, but I just wanted to be fair to you because uh, I think you have a lot of stuff in here, but it needs a better structure here because the structure was very important here and it kind of lost the focus from when I when I was going. Even though it was very conversational, that's why I, my comments are based on after viewing this three times. So that's why, if I watched it the first time, you came across very conversational, and I said, "Wow, you know, he's saying a lot of stuff here that I." But then I said, "I had to go to deep, dig, dig deeper here. That what did I actually understand from this speech?" And that's when I said, "Wow, this speech really needed a little bit of a." A, a solid structure so I could follow along what exactly, where exactly is he taking me. And the other thing I would point out is that when you're talking about something like online identity, you've got to have a position. I don't know what your position was on this online identity. There was a lot of information there, but there was no real position that I could discern whether there's a good side, there's a bad side, etc. So, I, I mean, those are my comments, and you're obviously welcome to challenge if I didn't understand the speech, but those are my impression after watching the, the, the speech a couple of few times, uh, three times I would say. Th those are my, anyway, I'll, I'll pass it back to Julie. Thanks, Jay. Um, before I chime in, Somia, the audio went out after you said something like, um, the speech is very, very something, and I didn't hear that something. I thought maybe you want to say that again for the audience? Uh, I, I, I really don't uh, know uh, where I said that very, very, etc. Oh, in the but beginning, the, in the beginning, no, no, your, your no, initial no, impression. It was a very, very friendly uh, you know, okay. uh, of, uh, conversation. You know, it was uh, almost like uh, you're chatting with me in my drawing room at my home, okay? So that is the kind of uh, uh, feeling he was able to create. So that, I think, was by itself a uh, yeah, very uh, good technique is what I thought. I fully appreciate what uh, Jay said in terms of, uh, you know, uh, body language, arm, uh, you know, uh, uh, hand-related movement, etc. being lost. Yes, that's uh, certainly a possibility. But uh, uh, f f fine, this came out as a very friendly conversation. If I want to go and talk to somebody else about, uh, uh, you know, their uh, online identity and I want to talk to lay people in the homes, they also need to protect themselves about this, uh, you know, uh, from this online identity related uh, misconceptions, etc. They need to become aware. So there, I think a friendly, very, very friendly posture like that was uh, very useful. So that's the way I found it. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you, thank you. Okay, so okay. Um, thank you so much, Somian. So, Latish, um, I really got the also the impression that you're very friendly, and um, I felt like an easy conversation, like maybe even like. I can imagine there's like a fireplace, like in England, you know, those BBC movies, and in the comfort and stately home, we're engaging in this philosophical discussion. Um, perhaps this is, um, and I'm okay with the, that body language you have because it induces a sense of comfort and intimacy and a conversational style. So. I don't think we always have to be making a speech, you know. And I think that was uh, underscored by the fact that you kind of look like you were just being uh, interrupted because you turn around and you say, oh, I'm sorry. It's like, oh, you want me to pay attention to you. I'm sorry. And here I am. So I really thought that underscores this conversational tone. I, I agree with Jay in the sense that the... Um, a couple of things. First of all, that perhaps there was a lack of focus and a central idea. I perhaps would just so that show you my experience. My title of this will be "How is this online experience affecting our sense of existence in identity, in relationship, in the way we live our lives?" You know. And so that's a very broad topic, and that um, that could perhaps help gear me to what you really want to share with us. And then um, the the underlying idea that we're always being watched, and the uh, the mega companies are collecting data about us. I actually missed that altogether, and honestly, um, I did not have a chance to watch this two or three times. The other thing. Um, I wanted to say one more thing. Oh, yes, you know, uh, this is my own uh, challenge as well, so I, it, I capture that. Is I think you make the point very well, and you make the experience very well, but in public speaking class, they talk about linking the evidence to the idea. So I feel like in the first part when you talk about your life and that you don't, you're not married, but you're so busy online, engaged, and then all these wonderful things like the doggy thing. It, it, those are the facts. And then you talk about the ideas online affecting people. But I never felt like you linked the two together for me. Um, and I, I would like that. And actually, that's something I need to do. Um, and then finally, I just want to really underscore that, as you know, I'm a friendly person, I'm a funny person, I can be spontaneous. But my uh, videos that you, my practice videos that you guys have seen, all says I'm pretty stiff like a robot. So I really appreciate that you can trans, tra channel and transfer this um, sense of comfort and intimacy and relaxation and that of exploration in the as the underlying tone of this meeting. So perhaps. It's, you can deliberately choose a style. You know, if you're making a speech about life cycle, QA, you want to come on more formal. But you're really gifted with this uh, conversational style. So uh, with this, I turn this Oh, Oh, I'll say, do you have any more questions, Let, Latish? Uh, no questions. I think uh, the feedback was uh, pretty good. Uh, so um, can, can I? Uh, Say something about those uh, feedbacks. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, I think uh, the feedbacks uh, given by um, Somin about uh, uh, being friendly and uh, the uh, the conversation style. So that's what I actually uh, intended in this uh, video. Um, I wanted to do a kind of a role play and bring out the you know the actual uh, uh, the the. Uh, platform, or rather, like the style that uh, I wanted to, uh, instead of instead of doing the talking, it was more of an actions which would actually give some uh, insights. So um, yeah, but uh, uh, Jay uh, mentioned it correctly because uh, I was making a lot of assumptions there. 
that uh, people already uh, must be aware that uh, we live in an era where uh, uh, the internet has uh, penetrated almost every sphere of our life. So from that angle, I did make a lot of assumptions there. Um, so uh, yeah, from from the content angle, probably I should have evolved it a bit more uh, and uh, given more focus on the identity part. Um, I was trying to actually uh, build a story uh, right from the various uh, aspects of uh, you know the various stages of uh, my day-to-day -day activity, how I do my socializing on various forums, and uh, you know how various uh, uh, people channelize their information through that, and how it goes into you know very various aspects of uh, my identity. So, and in fact, uh, most of us uh, are uh, you know in, in, uh, I think most of us would be on the same page when it comes to and accessing all these websites and then what is happening is like most companies are using this information that we are doing in the search engines we are we are accessing all the websites but this information is um, you know available for uh, you know being sold so i wanted to do uh, in that part through a role play and probably uh, judy you are right that i should have probably linked it with the uh, evidence which probably uh, is something that i should uh, you know try to work on to have evidence Linked to the main objective of what the conversation is going to be about. So, yeah, pretty much uh, uh, good, uh, very good feedback. So, I'll definitely look into it and try to incorporate as much as possible because every talk is different. So, uh, I look forward to incorporating these in my future talks. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to say something. Uh, see, uh, I sent the email immediately after I reviewed this uh, uh, talk. Uh, I think I made some observations more about the video and uh, things like that. I thought uh, this video was captured directly on YouTube and published or something like that. Uh, is that a kind of comment I made to you, Latish? Uh, Samin, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, see that mail. I'll, I'll check again. Okay, you didn't yeah. receive any feedback from yeah. me? Okay, uh, um, maybe, uh, I, I don't know, I need to re-look re at that. I am not able to trace the mail. I, I uh, got I it. Hmm? I got that email, uh, Somian. So you saw that email? Okay. I saw that because email, the, yeah. One of the things I felt was, uh, you know, the, the, when I knew that, it came out very choppy uh, in the sense, uh, 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 you know, there was uh, the bandwidth perhaps was uh, not good enough. You are trying to broadcast directly and re record onto YouTube directly is the way I thought. You are not capturing it as a separate video and then uploading to uh, YouTube. So when I do a 10 minutes talk and upload to YouTube, it takes about 20 minutes. So when I take that process, when I take that approach, a high quality band video gets uploaded to YouTube. If I try to upload directly live, what happens is within the 10 minutes itself, the, the available bandwidth it has to adjust. And so it uh, takes a very low resolution uh, video. And sometimes you know, the audio quality also gets affected. I thought that the video had that problem. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a bit choppy, and the, uh, the uh, to that extent, you know, a continuous free-flowing, uh, you know, listening experience could not uh, be had. So I, I feel, I, I think, uh, in the past, uh, Julie also had one or two recordings of that nature, and I had given the same feedback. Wherever we try to upload directly to YouTube, you will have this uh, bandwidth-related problem and a choppy audio and uh, you know, a grainy video. So I suggest you record it online, I mean on your computer, and then upload. It will take more time, doesn't matter. It will be a much better quality video. So that's the feedback I wanted to give. Thank yeah, you. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jay. And it's your, you have it now. All right, Julie, great job. And again, Latesh, uh, let me thank you for submitting that. And I think one of the things that I like to do is not to just use your speech as a giving of feedback, but as a way to help others. So I really thank you for uh, recording your speech. I hope, uh, and again, at the end, the main thing I want to point out is that the, the best person is yourself. You have to evaluate your own speech. What we're giving you is based on how we perceived it. At the end, it's what you think of it that really matters, right? And when you bring it here and give a feedback, and what we give you, you can take it or you can say, okay, that's one person's feedback. But at the end, the real feedback is the one that you're giving to yourself. So I just want to make that clear that uh, that uh, in these type of uh, whenever you share a speech, uh, 
the, the feedback that you're giving yourself is the one that really counts, and then you can decide what part you want to use. So anyway, thanks again for, for the speech, and uh, hopefully we'll see more of your speeches in the future. Okay? Sure. Thanks, so, Dave. Thanks. All right, great. So at this point, uh, I'm going to take a brief pause, and then we'll uh, uh, start the uh, segment three. Okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is uh, Jay Oza, and we're uh, doing Speech Talk Live, episode number nine, and we're moving to segment number three. And in this segment uh, today, up to this point, uh, we have taken looked at uh, professional speeches of really high-powered speakers such as Steven Spielberg, uh, John Cleese, Amy Cuddy. Uh, this speech is from a person that you may not know well. Her name is Monica Mehta, and I see her on TV quite a bit here in the United States. Uh, she comes on shows here like Fox News, uh, uh, MSNBC and others. I mean, if you go on YouTube, you'll see her that she's appeared uh, on a lot of these different programs where she talks about uh, small businesses, uh, entrepreneurship, and overall how the economy is affecting small businesses on many of these uh, financial shows. And actually, I got to know about her from my dad. Actually, she had, he must have watched her on one of the programs that he was watching and said, if I knew her or her book. She has written a book called Entrepreneurial Instinct. And this particular speech is about that, Entrepreneurial Instinct. And I wanted to use this speech because I think she does some things well, but I think the speech could have been made a lot better uh, from my perspective. And I think one time Julie was asking me, like I had said, like the, the, and, and speeches are either boring, bad, boring. There are only four kinds of speeches, right? Boring, bad, boring, good, entertaining, or inspirational. I would classify this speech as boring, good. And the reason for that is that she, of course, she's an author, so she's written a book on this, uh, Entrepreneurial Instinct. But I think she could have done a lot more with this speech. Uh, I, I think the speech was essentially like a functional speech, like, I'm going to tell you what I know. But I think what she kind of misses in this speech is that as an audience, I'm not sure I became any smarter by listening to this speech. Now, she covers a lot in this speech. It's a 30-minute speech. And uh, some, some of the comments that I and you know, Monica Mehta is like, uh, she's an author, she's a journalist, she's an investor. And she's written this book called Entrepreneurial Instinct. So let me just kind of give you my feedback on how I perceived it. I think the speech is uneven in many ways, actually. And one of the first things that I noticed is, and I did some research also on this one. And she, and just so you know, I don't know her. I never met her or nothing. So this is just my knowing her from watching the speech uh, and, and uh, on, on the internet. She talks about an example right in the beginning about Rita and Sunil. And if you watched it, it doesn't become obvious that she's really talking about her parents. It's almost like these are two people that she just knows or she's just doing a research on, but she never kind of says that these people are people that I know really well. I've seen them right from the beginning. And it never, it's never made that clearly, and I think she misses that opportunity to do that. It was very important for her to, because she spends a lot of time talking about Rita and Sunil, and it's a really good example on what she's talking about. And, and then what she could have done was she could have taken her parents as an example about what she has learned about entrepreneurship that she talks about as far as risk-taking, fear and motivation, and brain chemistry, and this is something that Julie just mentioned previously. She does not link it to her own parents. And I thought that was a lost opportunity. I mean, here you've been brought up, uh, 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 raised by a parents that are entrepreneurs, but your speech almost looks like, hey, here's an example, and now I'm going to tell you exactly how you become an entrepreneur. And there's no real linkages to this. And, I, I mean, you know, she's a real smart woman here. She's an Ivy League uh, graduate, but... If she had done that, I think the speech would have been very effective, and she somehow doesn't do that. I don't know why, but uh, it, it could be that uh, this is my uh, understanding. One of the things she she talks about is that that entrepreneurship, she's saying, is very hard to teach. There are these different processes, but one of the things that I guess you may not want it to say is that 
that she's in a unique advantage is because she's brought up in an entrepreneurial family. That's why she knows so much about it, and that's why she's in a position to write a book, that it's not that simple that everybody can become an entrepreneur. There is something that she knows that other people out there are not going to know. Like, my father's an accountant, and I know a lot about accounting just being around him, and she evidently knows a lot about entrepreneurship because her parents themselves are entrepreneurs, and she explains it, how they started out, her father being a merchant marine captain or something, working on a merchant marine, her mother being an artist or something, a creative person, and how they grew the business, how they added more stores, and how they uh, were able to grow their business to becoming a multi-million dollar business, and that is true. I did research on it. They are based out of Houston. So she, had a, she has a very compelling story, but I don't think it was told that well. And, uh, you know, at this point, I'd like to get uh, your feedback. Uh, and the reason I use this speech is that John Cleese gave a speech where we looked on creativity. And it's hard to compare her to John Cleese. John Cleese is a great speaker. And I believe that for her speech, she had to get to that level on how John Cleese was able to turn his speech, which was, like, entertaining, yet he covered a lot of content in his speech. This woman has a lot of content, but it never got to that point where you could really get into the speech. And that's what I, but, but the reason I included this speech is because the topic she had, she had the opportunity to get it to John Cleese level, and she never is able to do that. And I think it was a missed opportunity. So I just wanted to kind of draw a contrast between what a great speech looks like when you have the content. She has the content, but she's not able to take it to that level. So there was a lot of stuff that she could have done in this speech to get it to that level. So I wanted to get feedback from you guys. What was your uh, perception of this speech and what she could have done to, to improve it? Uh, Julie? Yeah, um, I actually find the topic really, really interesting. Um, I come from the um, area, my, my origin from is an area of China called Wenzhou, and it's considered like um, the entrepreneurial capital of the world uh, in China. In fact, it was one of the first uh, free economic zones in China. And one year I went there, there were like a sand gravel roads. Two years later, I went there, there were six lane highways. So the entrepreneurial spirit or instinct is really a um, very interesting topic. So with that in mind, I, I actually got more involved with the discussion than with the topic, uh, with the how she presented it, but I um, I just want to say two things with that. One is um, one is that she didn't. Uh, I want to say three things. One is she didn't introduce herself and lay down credibility or credentials. The second thing is uh, she didn't really integrate the knowledge, as you say. And and the third thing is uh, that she called it an instinct. But it's really something that's uh, behaviorally modifiable. So in terms of the first one, she just didn't introduce herself. Um, maybe she's talking to people and she was introduced before. You know. The second thing is uh, the speech was like about 25 minutes long. She spent about, I believe, something like 12, like nine minutes talking about her parents. So a, special, a substantial amount of time was talking about her parents. And then she talked about the techniques of uh, how to become more entrepreneurial. But I agree with you that she never say, like, my parents took risks because they, they, knew, they knew they had that optimism, but they also just did it without knowing why. But they also had backup plan. They know they can back out or that they don't have a choice, they have to push forward. Because one of the things that she said is survival is a great entrepreneurial motivator. And um, what was the third point I was going to make? The integration. Oh, yeah, so she called it the instinct, but it's actually a paradox because could she reveal the neurochemical differences, but she also gave a little uh, recipe of what to do to increase that entrepreneurial uh, behavior, so it becomes not just an instant instinct, but a skill. So that's uh, the three things I thought that was interesting from this speech. 
Okay, that's great. Uh, yeah, yeah, there, there are three things, that, uh, b before I go to Somian and Latesh, let me just point out, I think there are three things that really kind of also, uh, that I noticed right away. One is, she's reading the speech. I thought that was not that effective. She should not have to read the speech. I mean, she's written a book, so I didn't quite understand that. The other thing is that, uh, and again, this is something maybe she didn't have a choice, uh, she's standing behind the lectern, so you never really see her body language. She's not moving around in a stage. The body language here was very important when you when you have when you want to show your passion. You can't really show that all the time behind the lectern. And the third thing is because there was a PowerPoint, you always saw her keep turning her head. Like, let me see what the next slide is showing. Let me see what the red dots in the red circle and the green circle are. And again, I'm not sure this speech really needed a PowerPoint. I mean, what she was talking about was entrepreneurial instinct. There was no really need for uh, a PowerPoint. So those three things, I think, uh, that I forgot to point out that I think kind of hurt this speech. But anyway, I'll have, uh, let's see what Somin and Latesh have to say about it. Somin? Yeah, thanks, um, uh, Ajay. I, I think, again, uh, this is another area where I had... Uh, um, uh, given my detailed uh, uh, review in the, in an email. Anyway, for the sake of uh, uh, recording this in this video, let me go through that. I agree with uh, uh, you know Jay that uh, um, I suspect that maybe she is talking about her parents, but she never said that explicitly. I was uh, when I went through the second time, I was trying to really uh, see whether there is a, a cue to that. It was not really uh, there. Uh, if at all it was there, it was very subtle, but. I somehow could suspect that uh, she's talking of her parents uh, when she talked of Sunil and uh, Rita. Okay. Second is, you know, I again um, the same observation that she was uh, standing behind a podium and uh, you know she was uh, not showing body language. She was, uh, uh, you know, uh, not really. You know, she was reading out from the uh, uh, from a written speech, etc. Some of the things which I I felt were a little weak. But let's ignore all that and let's say that because it was a 30 minute long speech, she perhaps uh, felt it is safer to uh, use a reading kind of mode and uh, you know mix reading and uh, explanation uh, rather than you know uh, try to wing it uh, uh, without any such notes. That's fair enough. Um, one of the things, I mean, now coming to the content part of it, she talked of some kind of uh, you know her parents' instinct and things like that. Well, I do see this kind of instinct in a lot of communities. I mean, I have been in Gujarat in India. Uh, Gujaratis are very enterprising people. Uh, they, in fact, if uh, uh, if I introduce myself and say I am working uh, for some company, I am an employee, uh, they will look down upon me. A person on the other side, you know, who is talking to me may may have been, you know, uh, running a small business uh, selling cigarettes as simple a business as that. But then he will think that he is a businessman, whereas I am a, you know, a salary man. Okay. A salary man is equal to a servant. Okay, so that's the kind of viewpoint they used to have, and that is an attitude that, that that used to be there. The the you know the respect people had that for business as a you know pursuit far outweighed what is the you know real nature of the business, uh, the product and its simplicity or whatever was just not an issue at all. They were doing business. They were taking risks. They were, uh, you know, living from day to day in a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, juggling various things. So that, that's the one in which you know they saw uh, they saw pride. Okay. So that is one kind of uh, thing. But then at the same time, you know, one of the things I felt was, uh, you know, uh, if you really look at, the, I mean, I read a book called, uh, I mean, by one Daniel Goyle um, uh, about it's called Talent Code or something like that. There he talks about, uh, you know. If you go to Brazil, you will find uh, uh, everybody in the street is uh, playing football or uh, trying to juggle a ball, you know. And that's the country from which you had a lot of uh, uh, great football players came. But then, for every one of those uh, successful football players who emerged from that society, there are some ten thousands who have not made it, who just uh, you know languished uh, in uh, primary league or whatever it is and never made it uh, in, in anywhere at the top. So I think uh, to to pick, isolate and pick up, you know, this is something like cherry picking. You pick up one or two success cases and say, look, these people succeeded and, you know, hence uh, their characteristic is uh, you know, very desirable. It seems to be a very, you know, naive argument to me. In the sense, well, these people were uh, risk takers. They embraced risk. They, I mean, um, uh, you know, uh, face the situation as they come. They had faith in their ability to manage a problem and overcome that and, you know, uh, gallantly entered into new territories, etc. All that is fine, 
But then there are there may be some thousand people who are doing this and 990 might have failed. So how does that make this a success formula? So if we are looking at something and trying to get an inspiration and say, is there a success formula we can uh, you know uh, uh, take away as a lesson from this? It doesn't inspire confidence. They were uh, yeah outlier. They were successful. I feel that there are lots of people with uh, who do similar uh, risk taking etc. and go down because of the risk. Okay, so there was an example given, but no convincing argument was given saying that this is a desirable thing and you all must follow this. It is it is just a description of outlier and you know uh, talking very highly about that uh, uh, the characteristic which uh, you know promoted that uh, uh, kind of uh, behavior. So I, I somehow was not convinced with that. So that is the so that was the single biggest takeaway I was looking for. If she's describing somebody to be successful and she is able to say there is a formula there. What is the formula? How can I benefit from the same formula? To say that look, no market research was done and no risk analysis was done and all that could have been because well they didn't know how to do a market research. They could not do a risk analysis. Okay. Now having learned market research and risk analysis, perhaps. I have become doubly you know, cautious and maybe my instincts etc got nullified to a larger extent. That may be true. I am willing to uh, accept that. Okay. So uh, that's the way I looked at uh, 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 that aspect. Okay. So uh, that was my single biggest uh, um, uh, you know, difference on this uh, speech. It was a theoretical study. Uh, she was uh, perhaps towards the end she was giving some uh, ways by which you can improve that instinct. Uh, that is, you go out to a restaurant and do you not know, go and randomly pick one menu item and eat it. So what? I mean, whatever that we, why do you want to bother and uh, spend a lot of time thinking over it, analyzing it, and say whether you should pick this or pick that? Just go pick and eat. Face it. So this is the kind of uh, you know uh, thing she was saying. Well, what's the uh, what's a great uh, uh, idea? I mean, in that I, I really could not uh, appreciate that. I felt that uh, from that point of view, from the core theme point of view. I was not able to appreciate the speech. That's the situation. Thank you. Okay, I think Samyan uh, had some reservation on this speech. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I picked it. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll do a better job next time. No, but I think the reason I, I, I specifically picked it is because the speech, uh, I, I think she would have been more effective if she had just... Uh, left it with her parents as an example and what she learned by observing her parents and what does science tell us that she has saw, she saw in her parents. I, I mean, some of the things that Somian mentioned, I agree with him completely. These speeches tend to be very rara type and they cherry pick one and show, but if you're going to cherry pick what she does, because if you look at it, the other example she gives, she just shows the picture of, of uh, Branson, Gates, I don't know, uh, Steve Jobs and others. It was just like a quick, and these are the typical people we keep seeing. I mean, how many times do we have to keep seeing Steve Jobs and Branson? I mean, it looks like they were the only entrepreneurs. I mean, there are so many business around, I see, but we only see these people all the time. And I think she had a very compelling example. The, the reason I picked this speech is not to really, you know, criticize her. I think she's very, she knows a lot about this topic. But here's an example what I was trying to point out is that just because you know a lot about the topic, doesn't meet, meet that doesn't mean that you're going to make me smarter and i think that's what the speech is missing here that here she had a real perfect example to use and the whole speech could have been built on her own parents example and what she's learned from science that she saw in her parents and she just doesn't do it well and that was the reason i included this speech and that's why i wanted to bring that that uh, that this is like so that when you're giving a speech, if you're using some example right in the beginning, like what Julie mentioned with Latesh, there has to be throughout the whole speech. Uh, I mean, to, to off topic, I'll just give you an example. You know, we've all heard of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, right? That opening thing, that 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 that. And if you notice it, that thing is correct throughout the whole symphony. You hear that that in different form. That's throughout. It recurs throughout the entire symphony, and. In fact, I think Winston Churchill once mentioned that that was his inspiration, like that's what a modern speech should look like. Beethoven already had figured it out in music. And here she had that, and then after that you never hear from it after like she gives us the introduction of that example. Then when she's, giving, when she's throwing all this science at us, that example is never there. And, and, and that's why I think uh, this is a missed, a missed opportunity how not to do that when you're giving a speech. Uh, Latesh, I'm not letting you talk, so go ahead. 
Hey, thanks, thanks, Jay. Um, I hope Monica doesn't see this talk that we are giving about. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, for me, uh, after all the reviews, uh, um, I do have the same, uh, you know, uh, the same feedback uh, that she is not an experienced speaker. Uh, she didn't. Uh, she was not very structured uh, in her uh, process. I mean, she she had something in mind. It's uh, it's more like uh, like Saumya, you get it right when you said like see, it's like she's already successful and she is already having uh, her parents are already you know then the entrepreneurship uh, is, uh, she has some kind of a backup uh, uh, so what she is doing is like uh, you know she is studying her parents she is studying uh, how they became successful and she is coming up with some theoretical concepts uh, that is from coming from her educational background because that's where she she learned in uh, management college so see she has some uh, she is trying to uh, build a, a connection between the theoretical concepts and what was practically uh, seen in her parents. So, and uh, that's how I put it. Like, uh, you know, how uh, she puts it in a very different way. But uh, the, the the how it comes out is like I became successful. So, uh, and uh, this is what I found. Uh, I had to become successful, and uh, this is what I think is needed to become successful. So, these are the three things. So, uh, from I hope uh, I am audible. Yeah. So um, this uh, so speech was very informative. Uh, the storytelling part in the initial half, uh, when she introduces her parents and she introduces uh, Domino's and uh, all those, um, uh, you know, the as uh, Jay mentioned, uh, those personalities who are already very well known. So uh, she comes up with uh, a very strong concept in the first half. The second half slips out to more of theory. And uh, that probably loses out the main uh, agenda, which she's trying to drive. Like she's, I think she's uh, uh, giving this talk for release of a book. So maybe if the, as uh, I think uh, you, uh, Jay, uh, Saumin, and Judy already mentioned that the evidence, of the story which uh, she wants to focus on needs to be there throughout. And uh, that linking is not there. The second half is too much of theory, which goes overhead. And uh, yeah, I think those are like very high level concepts, but I really like this particular equation which you uh, say risk reward equal to impulsivity plus adaptability. I mean, it sounds really uh, a bit, uh, you know, it's like a, a, a kind of physical equation. Uh, and uh, she has brought in some chemical component as well, chemical, neurological, brain chemistry and all that. So there was too much of theory and science going on as well. Uh, so it's like a mix of many things, but it finally comes out to look like a, a book, which uh, you know she's trying. She's putting some low-hanging fruits. You know, she's trying giving us some carrots to bite on. Uh, so from that angle, it's a different way of doing a presentation. But uh, all in all, uh, uh, there are many uh, room, uh, many areas for improvement. So which which we are already discussed. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let let me just uh, kind of like what, what, as a closing thought, uh, I'll just go around because I think I've already given my thought on what she could have done to make this speech better. I'd like to get your feedback on what because I think the part of it is not just to. I mean, we're just using her speech. We're not trying to make any kind of judgment on her. She's a very smart woman. She's accomplished and everything. But I think we're just looking at this one particular speech that she, it could it could be that maybe she didn't have a lot of time to prepare. I mean, there are a lot of factors. We have to go by what we're seeing on you. YouTube, right? So I don't want to take this beyond that. This is just this one speech we're looking at, and I, if she watches this program, I don't want her to come and sue me or anything like that. Because our point is, we're using this speech as a way so that we can all learn from it. Because part of this course is to, and if she was on the show, I mean, if she wants to come on and you know, you know, we can do our, we can give her a formal review. But I think she would agree because, uh, uh, as a closing thought. Uh, Julie Latesh, what could, looking at her speech, if you had to advise her, if she came on and say, okay, what can I do to improve? What would you tell her? Uh, Julie, you want to start? Uh, yeah, I think I'll take this for myself, is that when I give a story in the beginning, and I'm going to try to do it in my speech next week, I'm going to make sure I'll link it to at least a couple of the ideas uh, so that not only do I bring the story into the um, into my ideas, but it's linking. It's also a way of linking the evidence to the ideas. So I'm going to practice that. Thank you. That was a great um, discussion. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Min, just a minute. Yeah. See, I think uh, uh, you know ultimately. 
to look at the i mean i perhaps was very negative in the initial uh, uh, stage um, I, I was only thinking that you know if uh, we have to look at the bill gates and uh, uh, you know steve jobs and others and then say look uh, one has to be a college dropout to be a successful uh, software or uh, it uh, uh, czar then that would be wrong okay so i i, I but however uh, i think uh, the way i look at her talk ultimately is she is trying to uh, look at how some people have shown entrepreneurial instincts i certainly um, uh, agree with that they all have shown uh, 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 you know your yeah, motivation to action okay so they are focused more on action than you know uh, analysis we used to call this as analysis paralysis you know when you go on analyzing you don't really take any decision uh, in one of the companies i work for we used to analyze so much uh, we, we used to be you know uh, uh, criticized in the industry as oh that company will have a lot of analysis paralysis kind of thing okay so the second is you know we will face obstacle and nobody can even with all the planning and thinking we will always uh, face obstacle and so the ability to move forward uh, whenever we face obstacle rather than get bogged down that is to adapt and move on was a very good uh, message so that was also uh, well taken so th these are the two uh, good things i take from this in the sense get positive orientation for action and uh, don't expect a smooth ride everywhere and uh, there will be obstacles and when you have obstacles don't get bogged down uh, keep moving forward and adapt to the circumstances and move on so the, uh, th those are two good uh, things maybe i uh, the other uh, analogy etc like uh, uh, looking at red light looking at green light and uh, how some people behave all those are uh, some kind of uh, theoretical research as uh, you know latesh was also pointing out she is i think trying to build a uh, uh, you know from from the investigation she is doing on the topic she is trying to perhaps build some kind of a theoretical framework and put it all together but i don't think that uh, uh, this would be a, uh, yeah, a book or this would be a top uh, subject um, that says do this it's a, it's a it's a it's a good study of this kind of thing is happening and this is what i see happening okay this is observation and a study of some success cases well there can be failure cases also with similar attitudes but for the success of these kind of people these are the reasons okay from that kind of uh, uh, you know limited uh, um, analysis it was good analysis is what i felt yeah okay that's good uh, latesh any closing thoughts on this uh, segment uh, yes um, uh, i think this talk was quite good because uh, most of the talks earlier had uh, a different context uh, this is a different uh, version of uh, how we are going to talk about something which is like a uh, very uh, interesting uh, part of uh, you know how entrepreneurial uh, instinct has to be developed so um, i i actually it, it was more of a, a push factor for me not the the talk was not of a pull factor it was more of a push factor but i wanted to understand what she wanted to convey so i i put my attention to all the concepts which she was uh, discussing about and um, uh, definitely a uh, big uh, taking um, a risk being a risk taker is uh, something that she is driving in throughout so that part is quite good and also one one important uh, uh, thing that she talked about was saying yes to about everything uh, so she wants us to be optimistic i mean it's not like probably she doesn't want us to say yes like you know just, just go on and uh, say an affirmative uh, to everything but what she want she is driving through that is like be optimistic uh, in your approach uh, but that didn't come out we need to understand it in our so it was an assumption basically uh, so the, but anyways i think this concept itself is like very very uh, complex so uh, i think it was uh, it can be better the talk can be better but all in all a good one thank you thank you yeah yeah, th thanks, Latesh. Yeah, so if uh, Monica is watching this, Monica, we're not trying to be hard on you. We're just using your speech as a way to learn from it because uh, you know your subject really well. I mean, you've written a book and you're very successful. But hey, you know, public speaking is hard and uh, sometimes we can all uh, improve and we just used your speech here to learn something from it. And uh, again, it was well received by the audience, so, you know, perhaps we are completely off base here. So at this point, I'm going to take a brief pause, and then we'll close out this uh, program. OK, so uh, <laughs> that concludes this uh, episode number nine. OK, we have to. Uh, so, so, I mean, you're doing a, another segment next week. Is, is that right? Uh, that is on uh, body language. Or something I have to check what you, you have to send yeah, me some information. Language. That's the uh, thing I had uh, indicated earlier. 
Okay, yeah, okay, so uh, at this point, just... Uh, how can you uh, make some kind of meaningful body language? Okay, so... Yeah, I, I just want to say one thing. I think this speech, uh, this particular segment, uh, I may have come across a little bit more negative. But <laughs> maybe I should be more positive. But I think I think part of this uh, uh, the speech talk is not only to learn from it, uh, uh, but I think it's also part of it is that there are people watching it, and rather than saying that this is uh, the r right way, I think we want to help others. Like, uh, I think I may be a little bit hard on uh, Latesh there. I mean, Latesh, let me just tell you, you did a great job, actually, as far as conversation, but I think if we don't get into dissecting it a little bit more closely, then it's not fair to you. Okay, it's not fair to you because then you will go with the impression that, oh, wow, everything went well. So we have to be honest because part of the feedback is you want to be honest, but at the same time, pump somebody up so that they don't go away, you know, crying after this, uh, this speech talk. I don't think that will happen to you, but, you know, we want you to come back <laughs> next week <laughs> because, but part of it is that, uh, uh, like it's to improve, okay. So that's the that's the whole point. And uh, if I was a little bit negative, I apologize. No, no, no. That's absolutely uh, improvement is definitely needed, and I think this kind of uh, feedback definitely helps me. Uh, thanks, Jay. Thanks for that. And if somebody wants to reach out to you, because now you you know you're you're you've given speeches, just give you a little how to somebody can reach out to you if they want to contact you. Yeah, I can be reached out on my mail ID. I think Jay already uh, puts that across the screen. So uh, I also I'm there on the LinkedIn as well. So uh, my name is Latesh, Latesh, L-A-T-H-E-S-S, Latesh Balakrishna. Um, so uh, reach me out there and uh, do watch and uh, try to participate at, as much as possible because this is a great forum for all of us to learn. Thank you. Okay, Julie. Yeah, thank you. Very lively discussion today. And I actually enjoyed the candid feedback, so I welcome it next week. Um, also, I run a, a Google community, Introduction to Public Speaking, and on Saturday mornings we have a read and discuss event. So you can find all that if you Google Introduction to Public Speaking Google Community, and please join and join us. Thank you. Okay, Julie, thanks. And Samin, did you get a chance to give your uh, input, I mean, info? Oh, he's on mute. Okay. okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, as, you, as you rightly pointed out, you know, our uh, criticism of the last speech was not to belittle the author. Uh, we definitely wanted to have a critical review, and this whole exercise was one of uh, practicing critical review. Okay. So we did it the way we saw. Uh, Fine. I mean, uh, uh, for that matter, you know, we are not uh, great speakers either. I certainly don't think that I'm, uh, uh, you know, anywhere near beyond uh, LKG or something like that on this, uh, you know, skill. So, however, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, a critical analysis also is a kind of skill. I may not be a good executor, but I may be a, a decent uh, theoretician. Okay, so that's the way I look upon myself as far as the public speaking is concerned at this stage. I understand many concepts. I am able to look at them critically, but I myself have not been able to bring in uh, all the kind of critical uh, insights I can uh, get in my own speech. Okay, so that's the way. So as far as this particular uh, last speech was concerned, I was looking more at the the invention part of it is the one on which you know my criticism was. Uh, otherwise, you know, it was uh, uh, it was not a uh, you know. Uh, it was not meant to, you know, belittle the author. I'm sure the author has, uh, uh, you know, had her own uh, successes and her own uh, uh, insights. Uh, I mean, I did appreciate some of the insights, like keep pushing forward and all those things, which are uh, very good. Uh, I definitely take them as uh, my positive feedbacks from that. Okay. So the, today's meeting was also very lively. I really think that uh, we definitely are not uh, uh, missing a larger participation, etc. Here, uh, so at best, you know, the yeah, Google Hangout can uh, take uh, uh, something like uh, ten people and not more, and we are four, and uh, we have been able to have a very lively conversation. That's good. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, Somin. Thanks a lot, and. Uh... I think that's it. Uh, thank you again all for, for joining, and hopefully next week will be lively. And I think uh, 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 Latesh has sent a speech. Do you want to go with that uh, for our third third segment? Uh, you had sent a, a Shashi Tharoor speech, I believe it was? Uh, yes, yes, Jim. 
You want to use that? Okay. I haven't looked at it yet. So if you do, if you want to finalize that, then let's do it. The uh, speech has gone viral in India. I think uh, <laughs> I have seen that being shown on TV. I have seen that posted in the WhatsApp and being circulated among people. It's, it has really caught on in India. Okay. Maybe it is a pro-India speech. To that extent, it may not be a uh, you know a ideal example for a global audience. I'm not sure. But then uh, I, I, I think it is a it's a good example of argumentation. You know, it is a good impromptu speech. Uh, Sashi Tharoor is referring to some of the points which are mentioned by his predecessors, you know, the previous speakers who spoke just a few minutes ahead of him. So he is quickly making up some counterpoints and things like that, arguing. And those were very good examples of how a, a impromptu speech runs. Right. So, so one thing I'll be before I close. One thing I do, do want to point out. I think that the, uh, our our Critical reviews of this is is important from our point of view because all of us are giving speeches. We're all recording speeches, so we do know what's working and what's not working. Like Julie has been working so hard on her speech. I mean, I think you went through like four or five iterations now, so she knows, and she's putting in a lot of F5. Oh, 10. Oh, it's like the number keeps going up. Was that 100? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so it, 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 that's that, that's the only way to really improve by going through this iteration. So I really appreciate that, Julie, and uh, keep doing it because that's the only way you know all of us are going to improve. So let me know when you reach a thousand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, again, everybody. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Thank bye. You. bye. 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 Bye.